It's been Adam Schiff of California. He's the senior Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, supporter of Hillary Clinton. Congressman, thanks very much for joining us. Good to be with you. So you're the ranking member of the Intelligence Committee. You were one of those eight members uh, of Congress, Democrats, eight Republicans, eight Democrats, who received the original letter. Have you subsequently been briefed on what the uh, FBI director is doing? No, and I'm not sure that any of us are going to get briefed. I think he had a conversation with the chair and ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, but didn't say anything that really went beyond the letter. Uh, and I'm not sure what he can say to clean up, frankly, the mess that he has made. I think this was the exercise of very poor judgment. At not just as a, a Clinton supporter, but someone who spent six years in the Department of Justice as an assistant U.S. attorney. You don't talk about pending cases. You certainly don't do it right around election time. He had to know this would insert himself uh, into the campaign and open up uh, himself and the whole bureau to uh, charges that he is favoring one candidate over another, disclosing things about one but not another. Uh, that's not uh, where you want to be. You believe those charges? Uh, do I believe which charges? That he's, uh, he's trying to interfere and show support for one candidate as opposed to the other? I think the most I'm, I'm prepared to say is I think this was the exercise of surprisingly poor judgment. Uh, I think that uh, this may or may not have been in his interest. He may have been concerned about what people would say after the campaign. But what's in his interest or even in the Bureau's interest uh, is not the test. It's what's in the public interest. Uh, it's also about fairness. These policies of the department not to talk about pending matters, they're there for a reason to ensure fairness, that you don't cast unwanted aspersions or innuendo. And by uh, sending this letter, effectively publishing this letter 10 days out, uh, suggesting there could be relevant emails, but there may not be, uh, that uh, put the Clinton campaign, frankly, in an untenable position of trying to defend against the negative. Uh, and it was wholly unwarranted. And, and I find it astounding that this was done when the director hadn't even read the emails. The FBI hadn't even read them, didn't know the contents. That makes it all the more extraordinary. It's like a, a rush to get this out before the election. His argument from his supporters is that uh, after the early July clearing of Hillary Clinton of any criminal wrongdoing, he said she was extremely careless in handling of the classified information, but he said there was no charges that he would recommend to the Justice Department, to the Attorney General. He testified before Congress, and he promised members of Congress, if there's a change in any of this, I will notify you that there has been a change. What he has done now, there's been a change in all of this. He's, he's reviewing some new information they've, they've received. His argument is, I simply lived up to the promise I gave members of Congress. I would notify them of this new review. Well, first of all, that's not a promise the director should make. Uh, you don't he make, made that promise. Uh, well, he made the commitment that if there were substantial new evidence, he would look at it. That's about all he said before Congress. We don't know that this is substantial new evidence. Uh, and at a minimum, he should have determined whether these emails were even relevant before going public. Uh, and I don't think that should have happened uh, at all before a national election. So uh, he, notwithstanding what he said, and as ambiguous as what he said was to Congress, uh, this was, I think, an unequivocal mistake, which is why you're seeing so many even high-ranking people, both Democrats and Republicans who had served with the Justice Department, uh, condemning this. Uh, so what do you want to do now? Well, you know, it's very hard to clean this up now because uh, if there are a lot of emails to go through, it'll take time to there figure out. There are thousands out. and thousands. Of, there may be hundreds of thousands of emails on Anthony Weiner, the uh, former congressman, the estranged husband of Huma Abedin. And then there are thousands, of, supposedly, of emails r involving her. And there may be some from the Hillary Clinton private email server that wound up, for whatever reason, on that computer. Well, you know, what they're, I'm sure they're going to try to do is uh, triage, okay? This set is completely irrelevant. Uh, this set may be relevant. Now, can they automate that process, or do they have to have eyes on every email uh, to figure out, okay, we already had these. I don't know if that's doable uh, within the next week, uh, and I don't think we want to see a statement come out the day before the election. Uh, and my guess is because this may not be doable, that the most he will be able to do is another statement that is heavily caveated, uh, and those caveats will be exploited uh, by no, Mr. Trump, no doubt, even if they say we haven't found anything but we're still looking. So uh, once you make this mess, it's very tough to clean up. The Hillary Clinton campaign says they want to release everything as quickly as possible. Are you sure that's a good idea from her standpoint? Well, because I there could be.
some embarrassing information that they would release. I think uh, I think it's the the right position for the campaign to take. Uh, look, when the director said in July that no reasonable prosecutor would move forward, uh, it is very difficult to conceive of anything that turns up at this late stage that would change that judgment. It wasn't even a close call, the director said. So I think they're quite confident nothing in these emails is going to alter that calculation. So, yes, they would like this out there. I'm skeptical the Bureau is going to be willing to do that. Uh, and this is why uh, I think that the mistake the director made is going to be so difficult to rectify. But you know, I assume you know the FBI director. He's got a very good reputation. He was widely praised by Hillary Clinton and the Democrats after his July announcement. No criminal charges would be recommended. Uh, the assumption a lot of people has, because of his experience as a former U.S. attorney, as a former deputy attorney general, now the FBI director, he would not have issued a statement like this unless there was something that convinced him there was a significant new development. Well, you know, I think that's certainly uh, the, the view that the Trump campaign has been pushing, but the reality is he hadn't even read the emails. Uh, so there's no way for him to make that judgment. What they if his didn't... FBI agents had read them and briefed them on what they initially, in their initial review of these emails, discovered? Well, remember the bureau agents weren't supposed to read these because they were only uh, given the legal process to look at emails dealing with Anthony Weiner. So presumably they couldn't have really gone into the contents of these other emails. They m but, might. But you're a former U.S. attorney. At least you worked in the U.S. Attorney's Office. If FBI agents are reviewing material they thought was relevant to the case against Anthony Weiner, he's being federally uh, ex uh, investigated right now for sexting with a 15-year-old girl, which of course is illegal. If they came upon some, just in the course of that, they saw some emails that may be relevant to the initial Hillary Clinton investigation. Wouldn't they read that? Wouldn't they take a look at that? Uh, well, they're not supposed to. If they if they have an email is, say, from uh, Huma Abedin to the secretary. They know that's not going to involve Anthony Weiner and, and the allegations against him. They're not even supposed to go through that. They're not even legally entitled to go through that. Uh, so presumably the Bureau would have followed the law. Now, if they looked at the metadata, the to and the from and whatnot, uh, and realized that these may be pertinent, uh, they wouldn't be able to review those to figure out whether those But now they have a search warrant. They can review them. Now they can. Now they can. But, but again, I think this compounds the mistake the director made after July uh, when he started to send investigative files, closed case materials to the Congress. I said at the time I thought that was a mistake. Uh, I said, you know, what the Bureau is calling transparency, they will have a different word for later. It will be mistake. And indeed, this is where we have now le been led uh, to, I think, what is a will go down as a colossal mistake by the Bureau. Do you have any idea how Hillary Clinton's emails from her private email server while she was Secretary of State could have wound up on Anthony Weiner's computer? I have no idea. Uh, and I think, and again, part of the problem here is we're learning everything by leak. Uh, I don't know that Huma knows how they ended up there. Uh, and th this is another thing that disturbs me, Wolf, is what we got from that letter was so nebulous uh, that the only really valuable information we've got have been from leaks from the Bureau, like the fact that it involved Anthony Weiner's computer, that it wasn't even a device belonging to Secretary Clinton. So. Uh, that's really a problem when the most valuable insights you're getting of context aren't coming from the official statement, they're coming from leaks. Some of your Democratic colleagues have now publicly called on the uh, FBI Director James Comey to resign. Are you uh, among them? Uh, I'm not, uh, but I do think this was a very serious error in judgment. And, uh, you know, as someone that has had a high opinion of uh, the director, I was very surprised to see it. Um, and and I can only think that uh, he thought this was in the best interest of the Bureau not to be accused after action of, of hiding something, but this clearly was not in the public interest. And if you're going to violate DOG, G, DOJ policy, you would need a darn good reason for it, and you better have something to say. Uh, and here, there wasn't a good reason for it, and he had nothing to say. This letter just uh, raised far more questions than any could answer. Do you know if the FBI is now investigating the Trump campaigns, or at least individuals who have worked or continue to work for the Trump campaign, tie their ties to Russia? Is that an investigation that is ongoing?
ongoing as far as you know? Uh, you know, I can't comment on uh, an investigation the Bureau may be doing or what the intelligence community may be interested in, but uh, precisely these questions are why you want to avoid uh, coming out with announcements uh, right before an election because it does open you up uh, selective in what you're disclosing. Uh, these are exactly the kind of questions that the Bureau doesn't want to have to answer uh, and why, uh, why it was such a, a grave uh, error. If there is such an investigation going on, and I don't know if there is, uh, should the American public before the election be told that there's an investigation of Trump campaign officials' ties to Russia? Uh, should the American public know about that before the election? Well, I, you know, I, I've certainly spoken out very strongly, as you know, Wolf, that the American public should be leveled with about Russian interference in the U.S. elections. And I think for that reason, it was very appropriate for the administration, the Secretary of Homeland Security, uh, as well as the NI Clapper, uh, to talk about Russian hacking and the fact that all these WikiLeaks uh, stuff really originated with the Russians. In terms of disclosing pending investigations involving specific people, let alone people running for office right before election, uh, that's not something that should be done. But here you have the director who has done this with one candidate, uh, and uh, and that obviously puts the, the Department of Justice in a very a difficult position, a, a terrible position, but it's hard to advocate writing one wrong with another, writing one violent policy with another. Uh, you know, I would rather see the director try to shed some clarity, uh, and if he can't, I think the director ought to, uh, frankly, have the gumption to come to the American people and say, this was a mistake. I have seen no evidence. We're going through these new ev emails, but I've seen no evidence that would cause me at all to alter my original judgment in July. It was also a mistake, from, with hindsight certainly, even at the time, for the Attorney General Loretta Lynch to meet with former President Bill Clinton on her plane just days before the conclusion of the original investigation back in July, right? Yes, you know, I, I think it was an innocent uh, mistake, but nonetheless, it created an appearance that there could be impropriety, uh, and uh, it had a lot of cascading effects when she said she was essentially going to defer the prosecutorial decision to Director Comey. Uh, that led to his rather extraordinary press conference, uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, we have been on a slippery slope downward ever since. There's a new ad that the Clinton campaign has just put out featuring the woman who appeared in that original 1964 Lyndon Johnson so-called Daisy uh, uh, ad uh, involving Goldwater, a nuclear war. Uh, watch a little clip from that ad. Message. This was me in 1964. The fear of nuclear war that we had as children, I never thought our children would ever have to deal with that again. And to see that coming forward in this election is really scary. Trump asked three times. Three times, why can't we use nuclear weapons? I want to be unpredictable. What safeguards are there to stop any president who may not be stable from launching a nuclear attack? The commander in chief is the commander in chief. Bomb the sh out of him. Is it responsible for the uh, for Hillary Clinton? Because today she spoke at length about this and her campaign to be stoking these fears of a nuclear war if Donald Trump is elected president. I certainly think it's appropriate for the Clinton campaign to highlight this is not someone you want uh, with their finger on the nuclear button. Uh, he show the judgment or, or fitness or seriousness of office and look at the things he said about uh, his willingness to consider uh, nuclear use or uh, support the proliferation of nuclear weapons by other countries. So it's more than an appropriate issue. It's why a lot of national security uh, experts, both Republicans and Democrats, have come out so strongly against him. What I find fascinating about this, this is the second Goldwater era ad that's been remade. The first was, if you remember, uh, the Republican who was talking about uh, Goldwater and how he can't bring himself to support uh, Goldwater, they brought that uh, individual back to do an ad, uh, and it's interesting how the Goldwater campaign is having echoes through this one. How worried are you right now as a result of this new investigation, about, a, a review, I should say, by the FBI, that it's hurting Hillary Clinton in these final days before the election? You're a big supporter of hers. Well, I don't like the fact that, uh, at least for the last few days, it's changed the topic uh, because I think there are far more significant issues people should be deciding this election and focused on uh, in these last few days. I don't think it's going to change the trajectory of the race. Uh, but what I'd like people to really focus on first and foremost is who's really fit for the, uh, this office, uh, who has the judgment, the temperament, what they saw when they looked at the contrast between these two candidates uh, during those presidential debates. Uh, that's what I want people thinking about when they go to vote. I have every confidence that uh, when these final emails are reviewed, the director will reach the absolute same conclusion as before. The problem is 
if that conclusion only comes after the election uh, and the director is in the position of saying, sorry, never mind, there really wasn't anything here, that's not much of a, uh, a way to compensate for this error in judgment. What if he comes to the opposite conclusion? There is something here. You know, it's just very hard to see how, uh, with all the emails they've gone through, when they concluded that not a, no reasonable prosecutor would think this was uh, at all chargeable, that somehow that conclusion was altered, it just seems so highly improbable. I can't imagine that happening. Congressman Adams, California, the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, thanks as usual for joining.